The year was 1996, and Sony had just entered the console wars with their original PlayStation, and they needed a mascot to lead the way. There was a lot to live up to. Nintendo had Mario, and Sega had Sonic. While several competitors made a big name for themselves during the console's lifetime, the one most associated with the early life of the PlayStation is none other than Crash Bandicoot. Crash Bandicoot was developed by the studio Naughty Dog, in a time where 3D gaming was still in its infancy, so no one knew quite what it meant to be a 3D platformer yet. There was no Super Mario 64, Rare Titles, or Spyro the Dragon to change the genre to what we know today. So Naughty Dog took it upon themselves to pioneer and give their take on what it meant to be a 3D platformer. Their creation, Crash Bandicoot, stood by the roots of more traditional 2D platformers by having linear levels that relied on jumping, collecting, and timing to make it to the end goal alive. Crash's original trilogy was highly successful, both commercially and critically, and Crash's face could be seen everywhere. Like, anyone remember these commercials? Is that Italian? No, Bandicoot is an Australian name. Besides being a solid game, another reason Crash stood out during this decade was due to his iconic design. While Crash fit into the bright animal mascot theme of the 90s, he also set himself apart in other ways. The biggest was the shape of his body. Crash is an odd shape, to say the least, but his exaggerated proportions make him instantly recognizable, even in silhouette form. His humanoid shape allows for a bigger variety of movement, and his large face also allowed Naughty Dog to push the boundaries of facial animation, which made Crash possibly the most expressive character of that entire gaming generation. When blank, blocky faces were the norm, Crash was a dazzling piece of personality that leapt from the screen. Naughty Dog also chose to leave Crash's model as untextured polygons, as they discovered that the original PlayStation could render shadows fairly well on an untextured surface. This made Crash's bright orange color pop even more, especially in contrast to his textured world. Crash, from a design standpoint, was pure 90s gold. But after Naughty Dog finished developing the original trilogy in Crash Team Racing, the Crash Bandicoot series was passed off to other developers and was never quite the same. The studios tried to keep Crash alive and relevant, but none could quite recapture the magic of the original trilogy. Not only did the Crash games suffer from a bit of an identity crisis, but so did Crash's character model as well. While changes were made in hopes to modernize him, most of the following developers failed to understand what aspects of Crash's design truly made him iconic. Traveler's Tales was the first studio to inherit Crash Bandicoot after Naughty Dog left. Their first game, Wrath of Cortex, tried to be as faithfully true to the original series as it could, though it was also critiqued for playing things too safe and failing to innovate from its predecessors. Levels felt too familiar to those in the original trilogy, and while Crash's model was updated with far more polygons to give him that smoother look, the original design did not hold up as well in the new gaming generation. Crash looked already outdated in a new game, and it was becoming apparent that he would have to modernize in order to stay relevant, both in design and gameplay. Traveler's Tales then tried to bring some new life into Crash with their second game, Twin Sanity. They even updated Crash's model to fit more into an early 2000s aesthetic. Crash was made leaner, his proportions were less exaggerated, and his clothes were updated to feel more modern, yet still recognizable. While Twin Sanity scored a bit better and is a game appreciated by the fans, it wasn't enough. Crash was still continuing to lose ground and fall behind in the gaming wars. In 2007, another studio, Radical Entertainment, inherited the series and created their take on the Orange Bandicoot, with Crash of the Titans and then Mind Over Mutant a year later in 2008. Radical decided to try something new and pushed for a completely different Crash in both gameplay and style. Their level design was a lot more open, barely resembling the linear corridors of the originals, and Crash was radically changed to boot. While certainly more modern, friendly, and sleek in design, I would argue that Radical's take on Crash is not as effective. The less exaggerated proportions meant that this Crash was actually far more generic than his original counterpart. Nothing really sets him apart from the endless 3D cartoon characters on all of gaming, cinema, and television that we saw throughout the 2000s. The swirly designs on his arms are an interesting touch, but again, what made Crash recognizable was his bright orange fur and simplistic design that could be recognized by an outline. Adding more details doesn't add to his recognizability, but rather detracts from it. The one positive thing I would really like to add though is that I appreciate that Radical finally helped Crash look like he has fur. Anyways, while Radical tried to take some risks, the gambles ultimately didn't work out in Crash's favor. 
and it actually appeared for quite some time that Crash didn't belong in the modern gaming landscape. For almost 10 years, there was no official Crash Bandicoot game. It appeared that the beloved mascot was now just archaic 90s nostalgia. But that isn't where the story ends. In 2017, after some hints teased in a couple of years prior, the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy was released, which contained fully remastered versions of the original three Crash Bandicoot games. People were ecstatic with the announcement. It was as if the past 20 years of bad Crash history was gone and the golden era of Crash was back. While the developer of Vicarious Visions has come across some criticism for how they handled the controls of the Insane Trilogy, they have also been praised for how they brought Crash's world and design into the modern age. To me, and I know to many others, this is exactly what a modern Crash Bandicoot should look like. Vicarious Visions went back and preserved Crash's original character and model proportions, making him instantly recognizable and with the new technology, even more expressive than ever. They also smoothed out his edges and rounded his face to give him that more modern and friendly design that Radical attempted to create without hurting his original design integrity. His simple yet bold orange color was also brought back, though this time sporting new textured fur. Crash's world, while insanely more detailed, is still as bright and colorful as it is in many of our childhood imaginations. This new Crash is both tough and friendly, unique yet appealing, expressive and quirky, and finally, that pointy mouth is not as freaky. At the time of making this video, we don't know what the future holds for our favorite orange marsupial, but the Insane Trilogy definitely sparked new interest in his adventures, and we can only hope that Crash might come back and be as bold as ever, both in gameplay and design. I hope Crash does preserve that good balance between nostalgia and modernization, and that he continues to remain relevant in the modern gaming landscape. Cause honestly, who could ever forget that face? But now, I want to hear from you. What's your favorite version of Crash, and why? Also, please consider becoming part of this channel's community by subscribing and staying up to date on the latest gaming adventures. This has been The Girl with the Controller, and I hope you have a lovely day.